Pregame.com. All right, we've got a big game on Friday, guys. White Sox at Detroit, first place versus second place. Pitching matchup, you got the aces of both staffs. PV versus Verlander. Ace, this is going to be a fun game to watch. This is a heavyweight title fight, honestly. I was hoping this is a Sunday night ESPN game. This is one that I'd love to watch from start to finish. It don't get better than this. There's no bigger series for both these teams. And couple that with the best possible pitching matchup you can get. And, I mean, for a baseball game midseason, this truly is as good as it gets. Is it fair to put the label, and I, I hate to do this, but people will do it, is it fair to say this is a must-win series for the Tigers, that they got to take at least two out of three of this? To, to compete for the division, to say we were the favorites when the season started, mm -hmm. we came out of the gate awful, but we're right there, right there right now. You know, I mean, it's ready for the taking. What, they're three, three and a half games back. This is a must-win series if this team intends to win the division. But if they lose the series, I'll be interested to see how they bounce back because remember, they're still going to be alive for a wild card, mm -hmm. but that could take a toll on a team because you're getting the White Sox at home. Exactly. You're not on the road. So this is a series you're supposed to win, and that puts a little pressure on this team. It's must win for Detroit, but I like to, and you've heard me use the phrase statement game. Well, this is yeah. a statement series for the White Sox because if they go into Detroit's house and take two out of three, they're sending a message yeah. that, boys, you may have thought you had the best team coming in. But you don't. You don't. And I'll be honest with you. There's, I believe there's pressure on the White Sox, too. But when you have a three-and-a-half game lead... And you're on the road. Exactly. It's more, you're a little loose and saying, let's go in there. Let's try to win two games. Even if you get out with only a one, one as and long two, as they don't you're get okay. Swept. Just as don't get swept. If they get swept, I think then then you're gonna have you're gonna have to look at the White Sox. They're gonna have to look themselves exactly. in the mirror and exactly. say, are we for real or not? But when you look at this team, Marco, you got Euclid now. You got Dunn, who's rejuvenated his career, stole a base even. <laughs> you have Canerco. Przinsky, these are experienced guys. These are guys that won a pennant. These are guys that won a World Series. So I think as far as the clubhouse goes, they're going to be just fine. But you look at, at Detroit, there's no better guy to have in a situation like this than Verlander. Yeah. The guy's a stud. 140 innings pitch, has probably the highest VORP in, in all baseball. He's worked three wins to his team. Mm -hmm. I know people say, what's three wins? It's huge. Even though PV's having such a great year, he's only worth half of that to the White Sox. So that tells you how dominant Verlander truly is. But here's the one time, and this is why it's going to be my best bet this week, that you're going to get one of the best pitchers in all baseball with the better team, you heard it here, and they're undervalued because of who they're playing, who they're going up against, and that's Verlander. You're never going to get a discount on Verlander. No. You may not get rich fading him, but you'll never get value truly back in him. So I'm going to go with the White Sox here. I hope betters bet it up because no one believes in this team, Marco. Mm -hmm. I do. They don't make mistakes. They're fourth in Major League Baseball in errors. So defensively, they're sound. Offensively, seventh in runs per game. Fourth in home runs. So that means even if this team finds themselves behind a run or two, they could jack one and get right back into the game. Well, I got to, you know, I can't say that I disagree with you because this is one of those ones where, you know, we talk about it more in football, in basketball, because you're dealing with an actual point spread. Where here, you got to win the ball That's game. It. But, uh, you know, you talk about value. And this is going to be one of those times where. Detroit's definitely going to be overpriced, not just because it's Verlander, because people are going to the look situation. at this. They're going to look at this series and say that it is a must-win, which it is, and Vegas knows that, and they know that the public's, you know, they're going to look and say Detroit's got to win at least two out of three, and who better to back than Verlander? So the line's going to come out high. We're projecting it at a dollar fifty, and when I did it, projecting it at that, I actually was projecting it thinking of what the public's going right, to do. Right, right, right. Really, the true line I, should not be that high. No, I I, I'll it. be honest with you. With the White Sox, I know Pythagorean over on their states that they've won five more games than they should have. I get that. But when you look at their run differential, they're 0.67. 
positive side. They're fifth in Major League Baseball, so this team's not winning by accident. They're winning because they're outscoring their opponents. And in baseball, it's simple. I say it all the time. You win games by scoring runs <laughs> and stopping the opposition from scoring. If you can do that, you're going to win games. I know it sounds silly, score more than, than you allow, but you see a lot of these teams, and they're not doing that. Even though Detroit's three games over 500, they're even pretty much run scored runs allowed. So they're not dominating anyone. And when you look at the White Sox, this is what tells me this team's dangerous. And I'm telling you now, don't look to like dismiss this team, even when the playoffs come, for one reason only. Not just what I talked about with the experience, but here's a team that's 26 and 18 on the road. When you could win on the road, brother, you're a dangerous team. One thing moving forward with the White Sox is we get to this second half and, and you get the stretch drive and you get the pressure. There's no question they, they've got the, the lineup to score runs, but they've over they've been overachieving. I agree. Pitching. I okay. agree. And I agree. One of the things that I always talk about, you know, you look at the the main four of this rotation. Two of them are are young guys that this is the this is their first time, you know, with Sale and Quintana. What are those guys going to do? Yeah, and Sale's already pitched 110 innings. When they get to the second half of the I season agree. and they start facing teams for the you know the third time in the in the season and such, we always talk about hitters. The hitters are at a disadvantage seeing a pitcher for the first time, but as they see him second and third, fourth time during the season, then it shifts back to the hitter. Are they going to be able to handle that and then throw in the added pressure of a pennant race? What they've done so far, Marco, that's impressed me the most isn't their ERA, isn't their strikeouts. When you look at that, they're they're mediocre, a little better than, you know, 50% of the league. But why they're at, we're at where they are is that whip, meaning they're not letting guys on base. Mm -hmm. And if you could keep that whip down, you know, I know people talk, look about at the ERA and they look at strikeouts, they look at the, the strikeout to walk ratio. But I think the most important stat for a pitcher is whip because what that in, entails is strictly getting guys on base. Right. And if there's not guys on base, they can't score runs. I mean, the most you're going to score is one run so if you jack it over the, par, you yeah. know, over the fence. And with Detroit, they're 19th in all of baseball in home runs, so they're not going to jack much. They're 29th in stolen bases. I'm hyped. I like the White Sox, well, brother. This is your best bet. I'll throw like one them. last stat for you. PV, road ERA, and you said this team's a good road team. His road ERA is 2.95. And his night ERA is 2.39, you know. Till you run ball. out of money. Till you run I, out of money. Vegas runner says till you run out of money. I don't know about that, but he's making it, <laughs> he's making it his best bet. Uh, I agree there's value with the White Sox at this number. Uh, he's Vegas runner. That's going to wrap it up for midweek videos. We'll be back with more videos at pregame.tv. We'll cover the weekend action, so stay tuned later this week for the rest of the action. He's Vegas runner and Marco D'Angelo. Thanks for watching.